Dear plant lovers, it was late spring in Shanghai and I'm plant shopping with a dear friend, Johannes, whom I've known for over a decade. Many of you don't know this, but I used to live and work in Shanghai. The city has transformed beyond recognition after all these years. I do have a fun travel episode on my personal channel Only Sean. It is an interesting video, so I will link that in the description. Now, Johannes is a Filipino expat living in Shanghai with a charming apartment and a YouTube channel. He's looking for some houseplants in his apartment on this fateful day. During our shopping spree, I shared tons of useful plant care tips for advanced plant parents like Johannes. This includes ferns, caladiums, orchids, schifflera, thematophyllum, and more. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a rare glimpse into the plant market in China. We come across tons of unique plants never before featured on this channel. And in some cases, some of the common plants we are familiar with were grown and displayed in ways that are surprisingly beautiful and uniquely Chinese. I walked out of this experience feeling totally inspired. If you see something peculiar or interesting, let's hear it in a comment section. All right, let's begin. It already smells floral here. It smells really good. It does. Fresh air. There's a waft of uh, floral smell coming in from somewhere. Is this where we're going to? Yes. So this is my second time coming here, actually, because um, I found this out because my previous vendor, yeah. well, my current vendor, yeah. used to be in a different shop. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, closer to downtown. Yeah. Uh, it's closer to Ching'an. Well, actually, it's in north of Ching'an. Um, but for some reason, they shut down. Mm. It's called Zhao Jia Tu. And eventually, they moved here. Um, so it's my second time to come here, actually. Mm. Um, so I'm trying to get myself um, familiarized because I still don't know where they are. Yeah. Because okay. it's massive. It's like a maze. Yeah. So we're just wandering in here, trying to figure out, find out where the vendor yes. might be. Beautiful palladiums. These guys, they're like direct sunlight. But they're a bit dull, which means that they actually need more light here. Thank you. So over here, they have a lot of booths with some of these plants that we are very, very familiar with, that we've gone through in the channel many times. Monstera edensoniae, Philodendron stadum, Alocasia, more Alocasia, this long ilobata, some uh, Cocodamas here, cute. Uh, I guess Cocodama might be a thing that Chinese people are into. This is an interesting palm that's in Cocodama. Chiflera, ficus, and this is actually very beautiful. Maybe it's a bit befitting of um, this region, this kind of look. I don't know what this plant is, but I think um, these uh, tree forms would go well with the environment in China. And of course you have your ficus, elastica, kaneki. This store setting here really encapsulates the Chinese family values. So the parents are tending to the stores and the kid is doing homework. And I really adore this. This is really unusual. This is how much? 150. 150, right? Is it Some of these might be endemic to China. The cognac jelly that you eat in, Jap in Japan, it okay. comes from this amorphous uh -huh. house. And the stink flower, the, the, the largest flower is, mm. is formed as well. This is very beautiful. And there's a lot of bonsai here as well. Very interesting store. Kokodama, and this is a Kokodama and a bonsai living in one. Even this Shiflera is cute. Look at the growth of this. It's like bending down. The new leaves. This is very cute. It's a common plant, but interesting way to grow it. This is very interesting. 
this fern, my gosh. This um, kind of form here with deformed branches. And there's a bit of like lighter green in the middle. Very cute. And the whole plant looks like this. But if you zoom in, it's rather beautiful. It's very beautiful. It looks like cannabis leaves, but it's got these like branches that are so elegant here. I wonder if they were bent into this form and it's trailing down at the end. There's a lot of interesting forms. Yeah, this is also, I think, quite common. But it's like definitely bent and then where you bend it, uh, it's trying to put out a new growth. And this is the top. Normally, I think we see this plant as an upright plant with that umbrella-shaped leaves on the top. Actually, if you love calatheus and you have a hard time growing them, this is a very good substitute. This is the Kymphiria. It's in the same family as the Calatheus. They are fast, fast growing, easy to grow yeah. with their thick leaves. Uh, yeah, and I definitely recommend this instead of Calatheus for more. But these are all Calatheus, right? Calatheus, what do you call it? Yeah, these are, some of them are Tenanti. This is, I think, a Tenanti, which is in the same family as Calatheus. This is very hard. This is the wide fusion, very mm. difficult. Um, but this one is not a Calathea, this is a Kymphoria, but it's easy, super easy to grow. It's got beautiful leaves. Thank okay. you. Must have a Calathea. Do you see how these have been cut, cut, cut? So normally this is a rubber tree and it's, uh, it goes one trunk up. And when yeah. you cut it, it grows into two. Mm. And this is cut, it grows further into two. So now you have four on the top. And as you can see, the more you cut it, the bottom will also put out branches profusely. Like, Oh, is that how it works? For every plant. This is the same uh, technique for every plant. Like mint, rosemary, just mm. cut it. You can propagate the top and then it will branch out. Okay. So yeah, you can control the shape of these plants. Mm. My gosh, this is a beautiful somatophyllum. Look at that. It's being supported by a support here. This is the leaves on the top. They actually love full sun, these guys. But look at the trunk here. This is a very old tree. But I wonder, like, did they even move it outside for the sun or uh, do something? In, in reality, they actually love full sun, they love to be outside. Yeah. But I don't know if they can take the winter. Let me ask. So, you can eat in the winter? You can eat in the winter. It's not good, right? Oh. And in our house, there's a lot of air. Yes. In the Red Dead country, it's in the winter. But this is very beautiful. Yes, yes. And then, it's like a bird. 对，那边也有一棵在后面。对，这个很多年才才。对对对。This is actually really, really beautiful. Look at the calm, the, the sound of that water. It's very calming, and I guess we would call this a terrarium. But this is like Chinese style, where you have all these rock formations. And there's some more over there. We're not gonna um, impose too much on this shop, we'll give it a bit of privacy. But just to show you quickly, this is what it looks like. Oh, this fish yeah. inside. So basically in this uh, system, it's like um, there's nutrients coming in from the fish. They're living mm -hmm. harmoniously. It's replicating like the larger nature. This is beautiful with all these like looking like trees. Yeah. Well done. Actually, this is a nice shop inside. Yeah. Uh, you, you might find water. some, yeah. Uh, you might find some unique plants. These Pilea peperomides, they are from Yunnan in China. And this is living in Kokonoma, and it's got its babies coming off from, the, from it. This is really cute. 
A lot of begonias actually also originate from China. So there are a lot of interesting begonias here as well. So this is the plant that you bought earlier, right? Right. Oh my so, God, it's huge. I, yeah, so I, I guess if you give it like good conditions, I think the lady mentioned if you give it like full sun, yeah. the leaves can get bigger. And I think this is what she meant, that they can get like this. I think this is a Schaflera, but I could Wow, be that's really massive. This is actually really beautiful. Look at the crocodile-like texture on the leaves. This is a fern. And let me show you. It's grown out of this pot, this beautiful pot. And it's a single leaf. This is actually very cute. It's a fern. And you can tell it looks like a palm, but it's grown out of like this base. So this is my vendor yeah. that I've been using for the past 10 years, I think. Wow. So um, I rarely come to them because um, I always um, just ask them to take photos of what they have, um, and then they'll just have it delivered oh. because we're in China. Yeah. Uh, we have things delivered. So it's and online delivery. It's all online. And also because I used to, I tend to buy a lot. Mm -hmm. So they'll come and then they'll carry everything mm -hmm. all the way to the third floor. Okay. Uh, especially the big ones. Yeah. Um, and they'll also help me to repot and pot new plants. Oh, okay. So it's like for a free. Of a service there as well. Yes. It's for free. Okay. Free of charge. Um, I don't know if they do it for everyone yeah. or because I'm an old old customer. Yeah. Okay, this is very unusual for me, but I have seen this in Taiwan and Japan. Ah. Beautiful, look at the velvety leaves. So this year, when you see a ball like this with like thread around. Yes. This is what uh, we call kokodama in English. And uh, they basically, the root ball is, is wrapped in like a ball of moss. Okay. Sometimes it is hung, but this is quite unique where they're placed in pots and they're perpetually wet. So there's a bit of water underneath that takes up a bit of water uh, oh, for these plants. Okay. Yeah, um, this is Pilea peperomides. This was huge in the, in the Western plant communities from Yunnan. It mm. used to be about 100 US dollars for a plant during the, during the pandemic. But of course here it is a common plant, I'm guessing, that it's got a very nice story behind it. So do you see them all in Southeast Asia or just in China? Yeah, I mean, a lot of these plants are also available in Southeast Asia. This is peculiar, this is actually very cute. But there are some plants here that are very interesting. Yeah. And they probably will grow much better here than they will mm. in my climate. So they were told that this can take uh, full sun, direct sunlight. Yeah. But the more light you give it, the more water it'll drink up. That's the tip for you. I see. So when you okay. move a plant somewhere with less, less light, you want to give it less water, it'll drink up less water, less photosynthesis. Yeah. And for this, like, you know, uh, they can take bright and direct light and direct sunlight, but you water it according to its... Uh, Mm. So here's a tip for you guys. This is um, one plant that's branched out. What happens is that you can actually prune it. Let's say if you cut the tip off and you can stick this in water, let it root or straight into soil, this will turn into a new plant. But what it does is it will encourage the lower branch to put out a secondary vine. Mm. So now you have two vines. And it, a lot of the times, this is how these plants uh, have put out multiple vines because they have been cut before. And sometimes you can see that over here, there's, there's cut marks here. Mm. See the cut cut and then now yeah. there's two branches coming up when you make the cut. And the, the, the one that you cut out, yeah. that's a whole new plant that you can okay. keep as an as a insurance in case this one dies or you can give yeah. it to a friend. Uh, but yeah, and I see a bit, of, um, a bit of a bonsai action here too. They actually um, shape this very beautifully. Uh, so this is called bonsai? 
Uh, you can call it, I guess, because they actually manipulated the shape of it mm. uh, to bend it against its will. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so, what do you think is the price in in your country in Indonesia? Well, this plant, we don't have this plant here. Oh, really? Okay. Hard to uh, con you know conceive it, but I would actually get this for that price I in my will... country. Okay. Yeah, because this is for me a bit unusual. I don't know again for you if this is a common or this is unusual. It is, right? Uh, Even for me, know. like, it's quite unusual. Yeah. Um, it's got that aesthetic that's actually very beautiful. With the... I think it's nice and chic, because yeah. like a slender and tall... <laughs> yeah. Like a model. And it's like, a, I feel it's low maintenance. Yeah. So I think I'll for sure buy this one. And I might also recommend for you to get bonsai wire at some point in case you need to... Um, because once this grows up, you may need to. Oh, I see. It might, it might like fall over. It might lean towards the light. Yeah. Things like that. But one thing about these, these chaffleras, is these baby leaves. When they come out, they give you these baby leaves that expand in size, and those are always a pleasant. This is very beautiful. This is very beautiful. It actually this can be used in the south. Yes. 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 它冬天也可以吗？可以的，它不不要紧的，没关系，冬天不怕冷。所以这个户外会比较好，对不对？对。So I guess you are looking for. Yeah, this is actually very beautiful. But I don't know if you're into succulents. It's a bit more adventurous. Actually, I'm not into succulent. Yeah. For some reason, I just feel that it's not that pretty. In lush. Yeah, it it's calls out to certain types of people, but also the mm. the care is very very misunderstood for succulents. Sarasenia, if I were you, I would grow this because they would love it here. So these are what carnivorous are these? plants. They're carnivorous. So oh, okay. the insects would fall into the pitchers. Uh, for this one, they actually love full sun okay. and want to have winter dormancy period, which we cannot give it in Indonesia. Oh, and um, okay. in the full sun, this will glisten beautifully. They would like turn bright and beautiful. Yeah. Uh, or so, if you have like night, night lights, spotlight. So the mosquitoes will just go in? Well, er every kind of pest. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if mosquitoes are drawn to it or not, but yeah, they would uh, uh, fall, go in there. This is from, I think, South America. Okay. In the US or something, yeah. Yeah, so that's the other thing. I want to have something that repels mosquitoes in my mosquitoes balcony. Mosquitoes, that is... For me, I know a lot of different tropical yeah. things, tropical plants, but actually rosemary might work for you. Yeah, I have rosemary, yeah. but I feel it's not enough. So I can buy some more rosemary, Yeah. some um, mint. Does it work for... Mint, yes. Mint, yeah. And also, like, uh, this one more. Um, Citronella. But can citronella live in uh, through winter? Um, funny thing, it died yeah. during winter, but now it's like growing. It's it came blooming, back by itself. And it's quite tall right now. Oh. Okay. I'm quite surprised. Good to know. Yeah. I'm glad that I did not throw it away. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier that you killed a lot of calatheas. Are you, are you going to want to pick them up again? <laughs> I actually have this at home. This is the Warsawiskia. This is one of the hardest ones. That's what I have. Yeah. Um, but mine, um, it was so pretty yeah. for the first two days. And then yeah. now it's just all droopy and just like a yellow and dry edges. Yeah. Um, it's just hard to maintain. I feel like it's like so high maintenance. Yes. So never again. Don't beat yourself up. For this is the, the Warza Whiskey is one of the hardest one, most pest prone. This is a uh, pepperoni. Mm -hmm. Over here, a lot of familiar plants. This is like a jungle cactus, the zigzag cactus. So this is 80 kwai. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, do you guys have it in Southeast yeah. Asia? I guess we do. Ferns are quite tropical, right? Uh, yeah, they, yeah, not all of them, surprisingly. Really? Okay. Yeah, ferns, they live everywhere in the world and not all of them are tropical. This is like thick-leafed. Yeah. Maybe they're not tropical. Uh, good for you, Okay. The environment. I wonder if, uh, for ferns, have you ever divided them before? Never. Do you ever get your hands dirty with propagation and stuff? I did once propagation. Oh. Yeah. But that, it's just like a cutting the uh, figle, fig tree. Yeah. So I just cut it once. After yeah. five years, yeah. I cut it. Uh, I found the courage to actually do it. Yeah. And then I put it on the water. Yeah. It grew like uh, roots and now just Planted it like uh, two weeks ago. Okay. So we'll see how it goes. Oh. But otherwise, 
not so much. And just so you know, these guys, they actually form the clumps. So if one day you feel adventure, you see that there are multiple plants in here. Okay. If this gets lush out of control, they will choke each other because it's just okay. lush, too lush. Uh, what you can do is you can divide, you can take it out of the pot, divide the roots. You'll, it'll, be, it'll come apparent to you. Yeah. And if you divide the roots, yeah, yeah. you can plant them into different planters and they become their own plants and form their new clumps. Mm, so they can okay. propagate this very quickly. And it's actually very satisfying, but you will okay. get your hands very dirty. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, this is a very interesting bougainville. It's got like a pink and white on the flowers. Or rather, they're modified leaves. The flowers are actually what's inside it. But I bet they're a popular flower here in uh, Shanghai. Very suitable for the sensibilities here. So I want to ask, yeah. So what are these? Because I've always seen them in social media. Yeah, these are caladiums. Right? Uh, okay. So they come from bulbs. And they, you see that they, they, if you grow one bulb, they will sprout lots of babies and you can divide the babies okay. up. They can actually get rather big. They love it very, very bright. And the media has to be perpetually wait, wet. You never want to let these dry out at all. And do they like a the sun or...? Uh, a bit of direct sunlight. Okay. Uh, right indirect for sure. And if you give them like... Right, right and light, direct. Indirect. Indirect. Yeah. Oh, okay. But a bit of direct, morning direct is great. And okay. some of these species can thrive in full sun. Okay. But if you see, like, it, it gives you a bit more green like this, this is not enough light for it. I see. Yeah, and if you put out more leaf like that, then that is actually uh, good light for them. They actually respond well to light. Okay. Yeah. And they go to dormant sometimes, especially in your climate. So they mm -hmm. might die back into nothing, but do not throw them away. Keep the bulb, keep it for the next season, and it will come back. Do you put it back indoor first to...? I actually have a video where I took the bulb, uh, took the soil out, yeah. kept it in a drawer for a few months, and then brought it out and re-sprouted it, and the new leaves were bigger okay. than my face. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So they respond well to dormancy as well, these plants. Very, very misunderstood. Beautiful, nonetheless. And they're very inexpensive. So if you, you know, if you fail, try okay. again. Let me ask. This is how much? Mm. Uh, 60. 60. Mm. 60. Yeah. It's, is that a good price? It depends on the variety. Some of these are rare. Like this is not the common one. Yeah. This is 50. Mm. Yeah, this is the common one. Okay. For the common one, I think this is expensive for me. I was right. Oh my God. I guess 10 to 15 Spot RME, on. and this is 10. I guess wow. correctly. Spot on. Oh, so oh, this is very cheap. 10 RMB for this rosemary. Okay. They are so fat and chubby. Beautiful. Okay. Do you like this or not? There you go. Mm. Winter and summer, you can grow it. Oh, It looks pretty and elegant, I feel. It does. It looks like a topiary, like, you know, somebody shaped that. Yeah. But there's one problem with this. What? One problem. They are actually quite fast growing. This is a new leaf and they can yeah. get quite big. But when they brown Which is a good up, thing, no? Yeah, but when they brown out, like they, all leaves are temporarily, they will brown and die, right? Okay. But when these guys die, you're going to have a hard time cleaning up your backyard. Oh. The leaves are going to be like everywhere and it's not very pleasant looking. So that is one of the downside of this plant. That is true because yeah. I have bamboo and also ferns and yeah, usually yeah. it's like a quite messy. Yeah, it can be messy. It's really, really, really messy. Yeah. That's why I stopped buying those kind of ferns. Oh yeah, this is the regular Boston fern. Mm. Yeah, they, and you always have to keep uh, pruning and, and trimming yeah. them. But do these like die back in the winter for you or they, they remain? Um, maybe it's me, but um, they kind of died. Yeah. Um, but now it grew again and it's thriving. So they, they kind of come back on its own? Yeah, okay. I bet they died actually. Okay. Uh, I was almost ready to throw them away. Yeah. And it grew back, so... Okay. So I just need four more flowers for my terrace because uh, it's mostly green. Okay. Um, I need to have some pop of color. And this so, is like outdoors full time. For outdoor, yeah. yeah. So and this one. Mm. Full sun? Full sun. Okay. Um, so this one, I do need help yeah. because... You don't like these crotons because I'm crazy. About... I mean, there's many, many shapes and species from this, but... But I feel that this is kind of boring. Because okay. you see them kind of everywhere. Yeah. Because okay. I'm also Filipino, so I feel okay. like it's quite common back home. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm. Oh... 
So, okay. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So you cut them all the way to the soil level. I did not know the very good tip. But this is a year, uh, year open? Yes, yes. But it can open in the summer? It can open Oh, beautiful. This is a euphorbia flower. It's also very warm. It's 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 very warm. 要晒阳光，它也得有花。室内的话，它花就这个颜色。哦，不好看。嗯，晒晒。哦，明白。它它就只晒。晒。晒这个天气只晒一天。晒。晒。晒。晒。晒。晒。晒。晒。晒。晒
And of course, if you can want to keep them for life indoors, it is possible. Yeah. But you have to go the extra mile. Uh, you need to keep uh, good care. They need very good airflow, bright indirect light. Uh, so, you know, with more leaves, these leaves are actually solar panels. So they extract energy from the sun yeah. through these leaves. So you need to keep them healthy away from pests, uh, from bacteria and fungus. So the leaves, like this is a healthy leaf. And then they will also need roots to support it. Mm. So if you can keep doing that year after year, that's yeah. fine. Another thing that might kill them easily and quickly is this medium. Like, uh, you might want to free them from the pots. These guys are epiphytes in nature. They live on trees. They yeah. don't want to be sitting in water. So no wet media for them. Okay. If you want to keep them in this, make sure that the, the entire uh, inside, you can see that the moss is completely dry before you soak it with water mm. again. Yeah, so you want to let it dry out a bit. Or if you want to move this to like maybe another different, like a terracotta pot or something more yeah. airy, you could water them a bit more frequently. Depends on how frequently you want to water them. Uh, indoors, never ever get the leaves wet. Never ever get leaf, like water in here because it will rot. So do you think this moss is better or just use a, like an orchid bark? Orchid bark will be better. I mean, again, it depends on how you want to water. If you want to mm. uh, water them a lot less, then I would say get the moss. Okay. But some of us, you know, we are over waterers. Mm. I, I don't know if you are. I like to give them, you know, a bit, uh, you know, every day, every two days or so. So I, it's better to give them a chunkier substrate. Every two days? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Sometimes every day. Okay. So it's better to give them a chunkier, it's better to underwater them than overwater them. Let's keep that in mm. mind. Okay. Uh, depending on your humidity. But, uh, yeah, it takes practice. It, again, it takes killing a few. And one more tip. Um, a lot of these are actually hybrids. It's Phalaenopsis. Okay. It's better to get hybrids than it is to get the pure species because of hybrid vigor. That means that they have mixed blood and um, they would have uh, faster growing. They would flower a bit more. Mm. And it's selectively bred for the okay. purpose of being uh, profusely flowering all the time. Mm. So get hybrids if you can. But how can you even tell if it's hybrid or not? Uh, most of these are, but sometimes okay. the ones that are pure looking, like the ones, I don't... There are some that looks like, you know, your classic okay. fake Phalaenopsis. Those, like, um, the white okay. ones over here, I think that's, like, probably like a, a real species. Some of these, like, weird dwarf forms, they're usually a hybrid or selectively bred. I see. Yeah. Okay. And what's the reason, like, uh, there are times when I wanted to repot them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like, it's either too dry. Yeah or the roots are too soft and it has black spots. Yeah, uh, that's rot. So you want to cut off, if you see any kind of rotting mm. or anything, cut off those dead roots, yeah. uh, sterilize the wound where you cut it, because they're very, very prone to infection, these orchids. And what do you do if they are infected? You, might, you want to cut the roots all the way until that's you it? see healthy okay. roots. Yeah. But do you need to spray something afterwards? Or? Yeah, if you can, fungicide would be a good idea. Okay. Um, yeah, or for me, I use, whenever I make a cut, I use activated charcoal. I just rub it with uh, activated oh. charcoal powder because that's okay. a, got good antimicrobial properties. So this is interesting. I was informed that these have absorbed dye. So they look like this. Uh, so it's temporary. I guess its base is like white color, but the next bloom would be regular white color. But this is cute that they have this. I just watched Barbie and yeah. I feel like I need to buy something pink. <laughs> How do you choose? How would you choose? For me, because I care about the rebloom, yeah. I will definitely choose the one with most and healthiest leaves. So, okay. And they, they are very slow growing. So it will take a few months to put out a single leaf. And that's again, their yeah. solar panel. I would choose the best leaves. Okay. And also, of course, you want one that is flowering. Uh, this is good, right? It's just flowering, it's not blooming. Yeah, it's yeah. not open fully yet. All right, so we are done here. Thank you so much for watching this all the way to the very end. I could, we gotta go somewhere else. Yeah, my pleasure and you're always welcome. And thanks for teaching me. Yeah, and actually I have one request. Yes. Uh, so there will be a video on your, on your uh, channel. Oh yes. Uh, when you have maybe displayed the plants, giving them a bit of care. I've got a channel, check Thank out the video to see how those plants are doing in his home. All right.
Take care now, everyone. Bye bye. Uh -huh. Is anyone there? All right, if you're still here, that probably means one of two things. Either you really enjoyed the episode, in which case I really implore for you to please send the video a like and do comment down below. YouTube really, really heavily rewards creators that have strong engagements and it will push my videos to other plant lovers like yourself. Or maybe you've got your hands dirty with laundry or you're washing dishes or you're putting away things and you didn't have the hands to click away from this video in which case I apologize because I'm gonna keep talking. Now being a content creator these days it's getting harder and harder and ad revenues are going down and I really want to make this my full-time job to create wonderful content for you guys and I've given up a lot of wonderful opportunities so I can stay here on YouTube. So if you'd like to support the channel financially there are two ways uh, but if you don't that's okay as well just watching these videos give me a tremendous support. So keep on watching and for the rest of you who are doing well and you have extra means to donate you can do so with my patreon or you can join my youtube member and click join on the members tab here and in both cases you will get bonus contents and these are all mini bite-sized adventures repotting and like little shopping sprees and i've also uploaded a resource of all the sellers in southeast asia that i've visited they are usually reputable sellers and they do export so whether you are looking to plant the a customer or if you're a business that are looking to import plants from Asia these are really wonderful resources that's only open to members and for YouTube members you also have early access to some of these episodes and for those of you who do not want to commit to a monthly situation you could also do a one-time donation by sending a super thanks over here on YouTube now I've actually done a ton of videos and chances are you might have missed out some of them so in my playlist section I have categorized them by categories like propagation videos care videos and adventures and you can maybe look through at some of the older videos as a means to support the channel because I really do think that there are some content out there that I've done that you might have missed that you would find interesting but I'm really gonna bid you farewell this time thank you thank you thank you again for watching this all the way to the very end take care and I'll see you in the next one bye bye